This video we're going to talk some more about PowerCLI 40U1's capabilities around configuring virtual switches and virtual port groups and so forth. Uh, so to start out I've got my uh, four hosts again and uh, let's take a look at the uh, virtual switches that are contained within these hosts. So actually let's uh, expand that to the properties and what we can see here is each of these four hosts has a switch called vSwitch0 using uh, Nix VM, Nix0, and 1 in a you know, some form of redundancy. If you saw my earlier video around uh, creating VM kernel redundancy, you know that you know, these two Nix are basically creating VM kernel redundancy for these two VMs. Um, uh, actually, for these four hosts. So if I say uh, get VM host and pipe that into get VM host network adapter, which is a new command let for 40U1. Uh, what I see is that each of these hosts actually has four NICs, so two of these are being used currently and two of them are not. So what I can do here is say get VM host, pipe that into new virtual switch, and uh, give it NIC of VM NIC 2, VM NIC 3. So that's going to go through oops, and I should give it a name, that would be good. And what that's going to do is it's going to go through all of those four hosts and it's going to create a virtual switch called production and assign to it these two NICs that were not being used. Okay, so with that done I've got uh, four new virtual switches. Right now none of them have any port groups on them, uh, but that's easy enough to fix. We can say get VM host, get virtual switch, dash name uh, production, and we can say new uh, virtual port group, and give that a name, let's say production dash A, and uh, that, sh uh, that should do it if I spelled it right. Okay, so I'm going to actually go through now on each of these switches called production, we're going to create a port group called production dash A. And uh, just for fun, this will become, you know, why I'm doing this will become obvious later on, but at the same time I'm going to create a second port group on each of these switches, and I'm going to call it Production B. Okay, so now let's look at some of the options that we have. If we uh, look at this virtual switch called Production, we can pipe that into Get Nick Teaming Policy. And what that's going to show us is uh, the various policy settings in terms of load balancing, uh, active standby unused, etc., that are uh, configured on all of these switches. So right now it's you know pretty typical settings. We've got two active NICs, so they're teamed together. It's load balance based on source ID, and um, you know you can sort of see all of these uh, fields can be configured using the uh, set dash NIC teaming policy commandlet, which we'll see in a little bit. Uh, the other thing that we can do is we can say get virtual port group and I'll just give it one of those and we can say get NIC teaming policy is there uh, uh, you know for the uh, port group as well. So if we do that we see some extra fields but it looks a lot like what we saw from the switch. Uh, the extra field basically says uh, are you inheriting your policy from the switch or are you overriding it at the port group level? So it's possible to override all of these settings down here at the port group level, and uh, we'll see an example of how you can do that a little bit later on. Uh, and that also explains why I created two port groups, so I could actually show some difference between them. So let's go back to the switch level, which you can kind of think of that as the root of the tree for this policy. Um, what we can do is we can pipe this into set NIC teaming policy, and let's say we want to change the load balancing policy and maybe we're not sure what to do. So here's a little trick that's uh, pretty useful a lot of times in PowerCLI. If you're not sure what to type, you know, just type in some junk and uh, it will actually tell you what values you can use here. So I just typed in some, some garbage uh, and PowerCLI tells me I can say load balance on IP, source MAC, source ID, or explicit failover as uh, possible values for the load balancing policy. Uh, so let's say I want to actually go in and con uh, um, configure all these to load balance based on IP. So uh, PowerCLI told me exactly what to write, 
and so now we can go through there and uh, change the policy on all of these switches. Now um, there is a uh, actually a guide that VMware has uh, produced that tells you about all these different options. You know something to, uh, that's very important to keep in mind is a lot of these load balancing policies will require configuration on your switch level as well. Uh, so you need to be aware of that and sort of understand you know the implications in terms of you know the rest of your physical environment that you're that you're plugging into. So now um, if we go back a couple of commands and get the NIC teaming policy on the port group called production A, you know, what we're going to see here is now this port group is also load balancing based on IP. Uh, so that's pretty much expected because this really inherited from the uh, you know this uh, the the switch level we could change that if we wanted to um, the way we would do that is we would say um, let's see inherit load balancing policy we'll set that to false and then we'll set the load balancing policy now I've forgotten them again so I'm just going to do the um, enter in some junk uh, let's say I want to switch this one back to load balance based on source ID okay so I can just do that and now at the um, port group called production A this thing will be load balancing based on source ID whereas the port group called production B will still be load balancing based on the um, IP addresses you know so this is is pretty good in terms of you know the um, granularity the level of granularity you have on all of these policies so another thing that's uh, pretty popular to uh, that people want to be able to do is if we go back to the uh, switch level another very common thing that people want to do is they want to set things as standby NICs or unused NICs in uh, fairly rare cases but some people do use those as well uh, what you can do to, uh, that's actually pretty easy as well you just take your NIC teaming policy you pipe that into set NIC teaming policy and uh, there are flags called make NIC active, make NIC standby, and make NIC unused. So if we want to take this uh, one of these guys and make them into a standby NIC, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, VMNIC 3 on all of these switches and move that down to standby. And you know, that's going to go through all of my hosts and make the changes. So hopefully this gives you a, a nice sense of the things that you can do with the get NIC teaming policy commandlet and the set NIC teaming policy commandlet, you know, it really opens up a lot of opportunities in terms of you know, making very granular uh, configuration for your networking policies. Um, be before you make any changes like that, do be sure to you know, understand all of the implications in terms of um, you know, load balancing policies and all of these other things. Uh, so check the um, you know, check the uh, description of this video for some uh, pointers to resources on that.